I wanted to find out how far a paper plane could fly, so I've been upgrading paper planes with small rocket engines to see which would go furthest. In this video you will see me experimenting with rocket powered paper planes, cause a few fires, and at the end of the video build a giant version with a much larger engine. It turns out though that this was quite the challenging project, as you're about to see. This video was sponsored by Masterworks. The idea for this whole project came originally from teaching my cousins to make paper aeroplanes. We staged a mini competition to find the best aircraft design with the aim to make the furthest flying paper aeroplane when dropped from this RC wing, which I flew to a set altitude. Three, two, one. Now. Some dive bombed while others flew super far. This got me thinking, how far can paper aeroplanes actually fly? Can you power them somehow? Can they even be powered by rockets? You might have seen these before. They're basically like firework engines. They're made of a mixture of potassium nitrate and black powder and can be used to power all sorts of things from boats to helicopters to very fast rockets actually. So how would the planes hold up to high speeds? To answer this question, I built a super simple launcher device that could gradually test the paper aircraft to their limits. At low revs, the launcher yeeted the planes and yeah, they seemed pretty fine. Outside though, at higher revs, the planes didn't seem to hold up too well to high accelerations and a slight headwind, which was a little bit problematic. So the results from that test weren't that promising really. The planes were flexing a lot when they were launched. What's not helping them retain their shape is the general humidity of the air and the general wetness of the UK. So so maybe I should be making them out of something a bit more uh, heavy duty. I tried using a slightly different paper in my subsequent experimenting. This is plastic coated paper, which is moisture resistant and a little more rigid than the standard 80 gram printer paper. I carefully balanced the motors on the CG and made sure that the planes could glide well as they now had the added mass of the motors. Despite being careful to trim them the best I could, each plane performed with wildly different characteristics, the common denominator being that they all crashed pretty much immediately. Whoa. Not again. So why wouldn't these fly? Well, the problem here is partially due to the mass of the aircraft and how fast it has to fly to stay in the air. As you add more mass to a fixed wing aircraft, its velocity must also increase if it's to create more lift to offset the extra mass. The problem with this when it comes to paper aeroplanes is that the extra speed means that any imperfections in the paper airframes are just multiplied and in effect you're going to crash sooner. On this plane I took extra special attention to fold it as accurately as possible. I also used a smaller and lighter motor, yet the flight was less than impressive and the plane ended up catching on fire to add insult to injury. So what if I used a more rigid material such as cardboard? Well, cardboard is heavier, so I had to make the plane much larger, and this actually mitigated any gains from being a stiffer material, as it basically had the same problem, but just now at a larger scale. Okay, this isn't the end of the video, but I think we've come to the conclusion that no, it's not a very good idea to make a rocket plane out of paper. 74% of you though said that you'd like to see an RC rocket plane in this video, so that's what I built next. Yes, okay, I'll admit that this isn't really a paper plane, but it is a fully functional radio control rocket plane and one that's super simple to build. I made a little pod for a much larger rocket motor so that this thing has plenty of thrust and installed a mini onboard camera. All I needed to do now was to see if it would fly better than the previous planes. So how did the first flight go? Well, before that, it's time for a quick ad from the sponsor of this week's video, masterworks.io. The potential of 3D printing is huge. I can use my printers to print off hundreds of identical parts for projects in these videos. With 3D printing, the most complicated things can be easily replicable. This means that some objects are now essentially infinitely generative. Masterworks, however, focuses on things that you can't replicate, the objects that are imbued in history and culture. As a Picasso painting will always be unique, its value value is probably only going to go up over time. It's supply and demand. But what if there was a way to capitalise on that demand? That's where Masterworks comes in. It's where you can become a stakeholder in pieces by artists like Picasso, Banksy and Basquiat. How it works is quite simple. The Masterworks research team analyses over 5 million data points to find financially attractive works that they believe will appreciate in value. Then Masterworks acquires paintings ranging from $1 million to $30 million and securitises them by filing a public offering with the SEC. Since 2020, 
Deep Masterworks has sold three paintings, with each returning over 30% net IRR to investors, and their new offerings usually sell out in hours. As with all investments, your capital is at risk. The value of your portfolio can go down as well as up, and you might get back less than what you invested. If you want to get in on it early, all you have to do is go to masterworks.io, create an account, check out what they have, and invest in their offerings. And the good news is that my subscribers get to skip the waitlist with a special link in the description down below to join over 380,000 members at Masterworks. Thank you very much, Masterworks, for sponsoring this week's video. And now it's time to see how this big rocket plane flew for the first time. Okay, let's go. Let's see if uh, we can get this RC plane to, uh, to fly around. Let's see what the performance is like and uh, see if it burns to a crisp, because it probably will do. This plane has about four times the thrust of the smaller paper plane, so I was excited to see what it would do in the air. So after a flawless takeoff, I had about 16 seconds of fuel to use up, which was just about enough time to do a few turns before the fuel ran out. Now all I had to do was glide it back in for a landing and avoid binning it. <laughs> yes! Oh, I was worrying that it wasn't going to, to do it then, but it took ages to light that fuse. Success! So, I think that we've learned that paper is not the best material for building a rocket plane out of, and I might have to stick to something like foam board and other more complicated materials. Well, that was a fun little project. Here's a video about a speedboat that I built that uses the same engines as in this video. And yeah, I think you should go and watch that one next. <laughs>